So uh, the main theme behind uh, web application development is uh, request and response process. Okay. So as we know uh, that a user or client will send a request and a server uh, will process your request according to your requirement. And after that, you will get uh, the required output in in the form of response uh, the response and the request could be for anything for example uh, you can request for uh, insert the data into the database or you can send a request to get the record from the database or you can send a request uh, to download something that is available on server so accordingly you will get the response from the server and to do uh, those things, uh, since the, this uh, this is your uh, dynamic work, uh, means uh, you will write some uh, piece of business logic that will execute on your uh, on your request. On the basis of that, uh, it will execute. So uh, for that, we will create servlet on uh, in our application. So uh, your servlet will process a manipulate, okay, and after that, it will give you the output. And uh, to create a servlet, uh, since we are using the Java, so uh, uh, we will create the servlet classes in our application. And uh, there are so many ways that we can use to create any servlet in our application uh, that we have already seen in the previous session of the advanced Java. That is uh, uh, one way uh, to create the servlet is by using the servlet interface, or you can create the servlet by using uh, uh, generic servlet abstract class or you can use the http servlet abstract class to implement the servlets uh, in your application so most of the time uh, you will find that everyone in, uh, extends the http servlet to create the servlet in the application and uh, we have already uh, seen that uh, in uh, servlet interface there are five methods okay and uh, the main uh, method that will process your request is uh, service we have already seen and uh, if if uh, you will uh, extend the http servlet then uh, you will uh, write the method that is the part of the service is uh, do get or do post or do put or do delete so these methods uh, you need to implement uh, do do get do post do uh, put do delete but when uh, we will use uh, which type of the method it depends upon your request okay so say uh, suppose uh, your request uh, is a type of get then you will override the method do get if the request is type of do post uh, sorry post then you will override the method post so i hope you understand that what um, uh, which uh, request is called uh, the get request and which uh, request is called the post method so uh, simple if i uh, in one word, in one line if i say then uh, when you submit your uh, form okay and the form method is post then that request will be the post type otherwise the uh, request type will be get so you can uh, remember this point in this way now uh, so here is uh, your uh, request and response process in uh, one diagram you can uh, see here the requesting the web page for example so this is your client and uh one thing that you have to uh, understand that client means uh, your uh, application that will send a request not a human being okay human being will operate that application so the client is actually your web browser so if you have more than one web browser on your system it means you have more than one client on your system are you getting my point if you have more than one browser on your system it means you have more than one client on a system so here the client means the web browser or any application or any application that 
um, supports the HTTP request and response uh, protocol. So as we know that the browser is an application, okay? And uh, that supports your request and response process. If you have created one application, uh, desktop application that supports the HTTP uh, uh, protocol, then that is also called, that can be also called as client. So a request a web page for, uh, from a client, then it will be analyze the request. If the page is dynamic, okay? This whole thing will be processed by your web server. Okay, so you can send or you can request for a static page or a static content also. So uh, the web server will analyze the request that the request is for the dynamic content or for the static content. So if the request is for the dynamic, then the dynamic work can be performed by your servlet. So it will run the servlet which generates the HTML. This point, just remember okay and after that it will go in the form of a response to the client as you can see here fine and this servlet can communicate with other resources which is available on your web server but this is the abstract diagram it is only uh, the thing that uh, that describe that how your request get processed now suppose you are requesting for uh, a resource okay that is static means uh, it 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 won't be changed when uh, it will be processed and get back to the client so uh, the get page from the disk so it will be stored on your server on the disk so it will get the page from your disk and after that it will uh, get back in the form of response to the client so encoded HTML file for HTTP transmission sent to the client. So this is the way that your uh, web uh, page request get processed. Even you can say that uh, this is the uh, form when your request and response process get uh, execute or processed by your web server. So they, these are your uh, few points that you should remember, okay? When you are writing the code on web app, uh, or the j2w so client request html page using the url if request is for the static page the page is read from the web server if request is for the dynamic page the web server execute the program which generates the html okay web server encodes the html for http transmission sent to the client Client browser receives the incoming html parses and renders it into a page user can see on the screen so this is the responsibility of your web browser that how to show the data so as we know that uh, the response uh, will be in the form of html code then uh, web browser know that which uh, tags has uh, which meaning so it will encode according to your uh, response so this is i hope uh, this uh, whole diagram is clear servlet uh, since we have already seen that how to create the servlet that's why i'm discussing this point a servlet can run on the web server platform as part of the same process as the web server itself so um, this this i hope this point is uh, automatic uh, self descriptive that servlet can run on the web server platform as a part of the same process as the web server is itself alternatively the servlet container can also run on a different machine so uh, Container means uh, the um, Tomcat. Okay, so a uh, cat. Uh, this uh, servlet container can be on different machine, but that could be your um, alternative solution. So uh, maximum time we have uh, the server and uh, the um, container on the same machine. Uh, Tomcat is a popular and free servlet uh, and JSP container and can be downloaded from the java zone web page or you can download from the apache um, apache's website apache tomcat can also run on the web services okay uh, web services means uh, you can create the services which uh, um, which is uh, 
program or platform independence so that could uh, also be that web services can also run into the apache tomcat and uh, there are so many types of the uh, web services so you can use the apache access soap implementation for the web services with the tomcat um, soap rest so these are your web services type that you can create your web services next is uh, how to communicate uh, how uh, your servlet communicates with the server and how does it uh, perform the whole process within the life cycle so this slide will show you that the life cycle of your servlets so web server communicates with the servlets okay why the simple interface that is called java x dot servlet dot servlet uh, we have already seen that uh, the servlet interface and the package name is java x ex extensive java means the extension form that is your uh, advanced java and another package is servlet in which you will find the servlet interface so java x dot servlet dot servlet this is your interface okay this interface defines the three important methods and these methods are called the life cycle of a servlet uh, have you remembered those methods or uh, should i sh show you a one more time have you remember the init service and destroy these methods we have already seen in the previous session of the advanced java okay so uh, i'm taking only th three and two more uh, methods uh, are available into the servlet interface okay so uh, init invoked on servlet startup put init code here so if you have some uh, initialization uh, for the servlet uh, to initialize to um, to put some value into the servlet means the variable that you can put into the uh, servlet class so you can put those things into the init and all these methods are called callback methods you don't need to call these methods these methods will invoke by your uh, uh, by your uh, web container you don't need to uh, in, invoke these methods even you don't need to bother about that how these methods gets uh, managed by your uh, servlet container so uh, these are called callback methods after that it will go for the service method and each client request invokes this method just remember this point the service method is invoked by each client request okay but init method will not invoked by each client request remember this point okay the whole life cycle in in whole life cycle init method will initialize or called only once only once okay so if your request for the servlet is very first time is uh, for the servlet is very first time then init will call after that service will be called and then your response will go back to the client and after that if any request comes for that servlet since that servlet has been already invoked so this init method will not execute this init method will not execute direct your service method will execute and when you uh, undeploy your servlet from the server then the destroy method will be called and you can put your cleanup code here that you, which type of the thing you want to clean before destroying your servlet from the server okay so uh, we can say that the init and destroy method will execute only once in the whole life cycle okay and for each client request service method will be execute one more thing this servlet that has been already initialized could be destroy on the basis of uh, uh, some time related thing means uh, suppose your servlet one servlet and the name is servlet one and uh, it has been invoked and initialized and whenever the request will come the service method will execute this is the process now the servlet one is not getting the request from the user for a long time okay 
and it could be anything it, it is the setting so if in that case the um, request is not coming for that servlet for a long time then the server will and server can destroy that servlet okay so in that situation the destroy method will also caught so it depends that that how many uh, how much the time you have say, uh, set for that request and response um, session okay the servlet container control the life cycle of the servlet objects initializes invokes and destroy each servlet instances servlets are written either by implementing this interface or by extending a class implementing this interface so uh, we have already seen uh, all the way that we can uh, we can create the servlet by using the servlet interface or by using the class http servlet so init method this method is called when a servlet is first invoked by the uh, servlet container it could be used to write the code that initializes file or connection to the database so you can write your code here service this method process a request from the client for example a hyperlink or from or form action it returns a response usually the html form in the in the html form back to the client the service method provides two parameters remember this one the service method provides two parameters one is called the servlet request and second one is called the servlet response to provide access to the request object and response to the object to the client okay so this uh, this servlet request we use to get the data that is coming from the user okay user can send a request uh, for anything so user can send some data also to uh, just do the process this data so uh, that data will be will be available into your servlet request object okay so you can get those data by using this um, a servlet request and when you uh, process the data and you want to send the response then you will put those data into the servlet response object and send back to the user destroy called just before servlet is destroyed by the container to enable programmer to clean up any resource like close the database connection and anything that you want to write according to your requirement so these are your method that uh, combinedly called the servlet life cycle so uh, one more time let's look at here receive the request for the servlet s is s loaded okay so loaded means that uh, the s has uh, accepted any uh, request before it so if yes then is s current okay means it is in initialization phase uh, um, phase so uh, if it is yes then forward the request to the uh, to that client if it is not loaded then it will go and first load it and if it is uh, the current request then it will then reload if it is not then it will be reload then get back to user so look at here loaded when the first used or after modified first use or after modified means suppose you have created one servlet and after that you have deployed that servlet on the server okay so uh, you do some processes but after some time you uh, analyze that this process is not uh, going according to your requirement so what you will do you will write again your code and after that you will uh, it means you will modi modify your servlet and then you will redeploy redeploy that servlet on the server so uh, this is the block diagram uh, you can see so uh, flow chart you can see for the servlet invocation so this is your uh, servlet class 
my servlet implement servlet so it will implement definitely five methods and we will um, see and we have the more concern about service method fine so i'm not going to describe this uh, part uh, i will write the code and accordingly we will see that how the process is going on one more thing uh, I will create the servlet by using HTTP servlet. Okay, uh, service method you can write, but um, the main thing is you will every time write uh, do get and do post. So uh, we'll see in that term. So let me start this one. So uh, in the meantime, if you have. Uh, since my means is getting open, uh, starting. So you can put your qu query and you put your questions into the chat box. If you have. And one more thing, I will show you uh, two things that is for um, servlet. Uh, one by using the mapping using XML or one by using uh, uh, mapping by annotation. Okay. Uh, what is the mapping and what is the annotation? Uh, I will show you. So, uh, as per my opinion and uh, as per my uh, learning experience and uh, training experience i have seen that uh, since uh, the servlet has been all uh, upgraded okay so um, you can use the annotation to create it okay but uh, the mapping is also very important to learn the mapping that is web.xml file i'm talking so uh, i will i will tell you the both ways okay so uh, remember everything because uh, you are learning the advanced java and when you will go for any um, framework like a spring hibernate or uh, uh, for struts so uh, the main important point is the mapping and there you will find the XML file. If you have any uh, problem, and if you have any, if you uh, if you uh, do any uh, mistake in uh, in the mapping or configuration, then your uh, application will not execute. So this is an important thing in terms of the uh, advanced Java that make sure that you are mapping or configure your application very perfectly very correctly okay otherwise you will uh, get exception error and uh, uh, to resolve those things is a very tough task so come to this part uh, since uh, let me this is our first online application that we have created i hope this is visible so uh, and uh, when i when i expand this uh, you will find those these things that we as um, these things and i have already described and explained everything that which code should be uh, which uh, file should be put in which folder and one file is here that is the source package where you will put all java classes and those java classes could be your servlet those java classes could be any type of the java class so uh, i have created one for servlet and we have already seen this okay now uh, i will uh, do this one okay so first we'll see that how to use the do get to do this first write this one since this is your first servlet and user will send a request for the serve first servlet then the do get 
if the uh, request type is the get then this method will execute by your server or container then definitely after processing uh, some uh, data you will send a response to the user okay so i am writing only i am from okay i am from first servlet this is the message that will be print so uh, let's execute it uh, let me change my browser first so it will show you the output into the browser okay this is leave it as the my servlet the first servlet So as you can see, uh, this first servlet, and look at the path. This is important. This is your server, okay? This is your server, and this is your first online application that is your project. So on a ser server, you can have many uh, application, and within this uh, application, we have one resource that is first servlet okay so you can see that there is a blank page but i have written one thing that is system.out.println i am from first servlet so just come to this part and you can see the output is on server look at here i am from first servlet this is so the system.out.println works like uh, the class which runs which uh, which is uh, going to execute that is your first servlet so it will produce the output by using system dot out at that location where this file is executing so since this file is is executing on the server so this will produce the output on server console so look at here this output is showing on the server console okay but we don't need to show the output on server console our requirement is to produce the output on the client machine and your client could be uh, at any location in the world okay so it means you need to send this output on to the requested client machine okay so if the request is coming from the india or uh, america or in in the same country it can be on different machine so it should be it should be uh, go on that machine where from where the request is coming so uh, if you write the system dot out dot print ln then this is this is the correct syntax according to the java but this output will not visible to the client that you can see here okay so what you will do first since you can see here the http servlet request one reference name is req so uh, one thing i'm going to change it to request we can write now okay we can write this we can change the name of objects so no problem at all okay so i am writing the request http servlet request the object name is request http servlet response the object name is response and when you uh, when the get uh, do get method will execute for a particular request so the do get method knows that where it will send the response and how uh, how does the do get know so do get has an object of response type so if we send the data on the response then it will go to the requested client okay so it means we need to send 
the data to the response, not to the system dot out dot print element. Okay, but still not coming. Just tell me, it's still breaking. So, uh, okay. So let me know when it uh, get fixed because my network is uh, showing that it is fine. But maybe the problem with the zoom. Maybe okay. Yes, I, I can. I can repeat it. So just tell me that uh, now. Is it uh, fine? Voice is fine. Not able to hear. Still. So you are telling me, Meng, uh, this time that voice is not coming. So you should uh, tell me that uh, earlier, now. Okay. It's still breaking. If voice is not coming perfectly, so you should tell me first that voice is not coming, that you are saying that it is very bad today. Let me fix it. Wait. Okay, now tell me, Meng, is it now fine? Okay, so uh, if you get any problem related to the video and uh, the voice, just tell me at that time, okay? Otherwise, uh, if the voice is not coming properly, then you will not get uh, that, uh, what I'm trying to uh, explain the things. Okay, everyone. And these things uh, happen in, uh, in the online session. So it is not a big deal in online uh, session. Because you don't have the control on the internet. Okay, so uh, what I was saying, uh, just uh, listen one more time, okay? When a user, uh, okay, uh, I'll explain uh, from the starting. Okay, I am writing the system dot out dot print ln. Okay, so uh, as we know that uh, system dot out dot print ln, this will show the output on the machine where you have your class pipe. Okay, and this servlet will be on server. Fine. So this system dot out dot print ln will produce the output on server, not onto the client machine. Fine. So when I am requesting it, uh, look at here. Suppose this is my servlet and I'm requesting for it just here and I'm hitting the enter. Okay, this one. My servlet gets execute. But I'm not uh, visible to show the output. Why? Because I have written the system dot out dot print ln. So it it will produce the output on the server machine. Just look at here. I am from servlet the first time and second time when I call it, then it is I am from the servlet. But what is the requirement? The requirement is that it this output should be on the client machine, not onto the server. Why? Because the user wants to know that what is what is the output. So user will not able to go onto the server and read the output. Suppose your server is in Singapore and you are in a USA. So you will go into the Singapore to read that what is the output? No, this is not the way, okay? So what you will do to uh, respond the output to the client, just look at, the signature of this method, fine. The, the do get method has two object. One object is a type of HTTP servlet. 
request okay and second object is of type http servlet response so the do get know that from where the request is coming and where the response is to be sent so if we write all the data all the data on to the response okay so this will carry your response to the client okay so how to send a response to the user what we will do first we'll create the print writer object okay so create a print writer object suppose out is equal response dot get writer so what we uh, what I have uh, done here, I am writing create a print writer object with the help of the response. So now we are getting an object of the print writer, and this print writer is getting by the response object. It means whatever you will write using print writer, it will write onto the response. Okay, so write just only out dot. And all the method you will find print print ln okay so print I am I am from servlet one this is the message now come to the browser if users send a request for the first servlet so look at that which type of the output you are seeing you can see that I am from servlet one. Fine. So this is the plain text that you can send to the client machine. But as we know that this is your browser, the client uh, is your browser. And maximum time, what we do, we send a request by using the browser and the browser understands the html code very effectively and it will show the output uh, with formatting also okay so what we can do is this is the plain text so we can send our request in the form of html also so what we can do is a response okay response dot set content type so what is the content you want to send back so i want to send back a text and html type of the data okay so the response dot set content type means the content that is going in the form of the response is the type of text and Ooh. html so if i do this then you can see that the formatting get changed look at here getting fine so i hope uh, this is clear now that uh, how to send a request from the user and how this how to send the response from the server to the user this uh, system dot out dot print ln we use for the debugging uh, we can use that suppose uh, some piece of the code gets executed and we want to uh, see that uh, what is the output so since we are the developer okay so we can see uh, the logs on the server also but the user cannot see but we can see that we are the developer so uh, we can go here and see that okay this part is getting executed this part is getting executed so we can use a uh, system dot out dot print ln for the debugging but to show the output to the user you need to write on to the response on this way and we are sending we are sending the response we are sending the response in the form of text slash html it means we can write the html code here 
you can write the html code but make sure that all the html code is inside your out.println so you can write uh, as many as number of the out.println as per your requirement let me uh, change the size of this text i want to uh, print into the form as heading so what will i do i will write this one okay so when this text will go in the form of a string so browser browser when this type of thing comes uh, to the browser browser understand this is um, this is a tag and the tag meaning is already defined for the browser so it will replace this h1 with the meaning and after that it will change the it closes enclosed a string and it will print into the h1 format so just look at here i'm sending the request you can see that it has been changed into the h1 size heading size okay in the same way you can write here like uh, suppose this i want to use as underline and i want to use as italic okay so I'll close as italic first, then I'll close underline. Look at here. So only the thing that you need to manage is you are writing all the tags within out.println. Fine. So right. So you can see here underline and italic. I think one tag is extra here. Now tell me that. Uh, this part is clear that how to process the data and how to sorry not process the data how to uh, response data to the user any doubt uh, the other content type could be your pdf uh, images okay uh, documents so there are so many types means uh, if your browser supports uh, you have seen that when you send a request then your browser open the pdf file because that responds the page as a pdf and you can read the data images jpg okay so these are your content type but remember this when you set the content type you are sending the same content type otherwise maybe uh, some browser will support otherwise some browser may not support so uh, your program will not show you appropriately so i will show you that uh, which type of the content type you can write uh, in the sun, uh, subsequent session okay man so you don't have any query in the good okay uh, what about justin justin do you have any query uh, till now or okay so i will move to other part okay now uh, suppose you want to send some data that could be process okay you want to send your name and say that print my name in bold form this is one example okay so you can send anything any data to process so the sending data is by using can be by using your url request process okay so how to do that just put the question mark here okay where after your servlet name you can put the question mark and write one uh, i can say uh, i say it is a variable name so question mark a variable name for example name and what is the name that you want to send into this variable is equal okay so i am sending the name as daniel this one hit the enter you will see that this is the same output so since this url is sending some extra data from here 
So it means you need to access these data into your code. Into your code. Fine. And when any data uh, uh, goes with your request, since this is the part of the request, okay? So when your data goes with your request, then all the values will be encapsulated into the request object, okay? So this request object will give you the data that is encapsulated into the user's request. So how to get the data? This point is important. If you get this point, then you will understand the 20% of the request process, okay? This is the name, this is the value, okay? And technically we say that this is one parameter of the request that has a value Danyar and the whatever the value you want, okay? So it means we can access the value by accessing the variable, okay? So in code, we will access the variable name, but how? We will get that variable by using request, okay? So to get that thing, from the request, we will call first the request object. And there is a method that is called get parameter. Okay. So which parameter you want to get? So I want to get the parameter name. The name of the, the parameter name is name. You can see here. Okay. So get the parameter from the request, which name is name. And it will return it will return the value in the form of the string. So we can get that value in the form of a string and we can store the value into another variable. This statement is clear. Yes, tell me that how to get the value from the parameter. Good. So now when the user will send a request, that value will come into the name and that value will be stored into the N. So now you can write your logic here to perform the action that what you want to do with the N. So I want that I will greet that user that hello, welcome, okay? welcome and the username is n and this n i want to print into the bold so i will write into the b from here then concat into the string with the b so this value will print into the bold so now look at the output here and it will show you that hello welcome daniel okay so if you change the value here for example, I'm writing the Justin, for example. Okay, so it will say that, hello, welcome, Justin. So now you can see that this page is dynamic. According to the user's request, it gets changed. Okay, so this is one client. I have another client with me that is this browser, Edge, and I'm sending the request to this application for servlet and I am writing the name as Ming. This one. So now you can see one client is using uh, this application in in China and another one is using in USA. Another one is using in India. So according to the user's request, your process, your uh, request is get processed and you are getting the response. Fine. So, uh, as I said earlier, if you have more than one browser on your machine, then it means you have more than one client on your machine. So, I have installed more than one client here. Fine.
So definitely, uh, you will not write this statement to pass the data. I, I was just explaining that how the data will go into the request. Now, So wait for two minutes, just uh, with the size of two bytes, means 1000, sorry, 2048 character length. Okay. So this is the method that is get. And uh, if you have more than one parameter, then, uh, then you need to separate every variable. Okay. Every variable you need to separate. So how will you uh, separate those values? So by writing the amp person, okay? Now write another variable. For example, age is equal, okay? The age you are writing 21. So you can uh, send the request, but as we know that only the name is accessing in our application. So uh, you need to write that the age should also be Uh, still breaking, Ming. Uh, is it fine now? Okay, so now got it that how to uh, write more than one variable and how to get the values. Okay, so now what you will do in your code, right here, only one thing that is request dot get parameter. The parameter name is age. Okay, and the variable should be another one, uh, for example, age. And remember this point every time, every time request.get parameter will return the value in the form of a string. Got it? So, welcome this. And if, if you want to print the name, uh, sorry, age, so you can write plus age also. So, just let me show you that. Welcome, Justin, and this is your. 21. So I hope this is uh, now clear, but uh, you know what? Uh, the user doesn't know that which type of the para parameter you have, uh, you are still, okay. So, uh, okay, Indija, just tell me, uh, it's still breaking. Now it is fine. Okay, so uh, what I was saying that uh, yeah. since uh, this code is not for the end user, means it is not visible to the end user. So your end user doesn't know, even your client doesn't know that what type of and what is the name of the parameters you have in your code. Okay, so since we are writing the code and we are the developer, so uh, I, I was showing that how to send the request. Okay, but this is not the right way that write then the parameter name and then send the value and get the values in your code. This could be automatic send by user's click. Got it? So user can send a request, user can send a request by clicking on any link by clicking on any link or by submitting the form by submitting the form so this is these are two ways to send a request to the servlet okay so uh, what are those ways uh, two ways two ways are First one is by clicking on any link or by clicking on, uh, by uh, submitting the form, fine. So now, uh, okay. what I'm uh, going to do is, just look at here. I'm going to create one uh, page, okay, one form that will send a request to this servlet. Are you getting what I'm going to do is, since user will send 
the request to this servlet okay so we have to create a sending parameter or sending uh, element so user can send a request to the servlet by using any uh, link okay or by using any form so it means you have to create a form then after that it will send a request so the form you can create by using html so i'm going to create one html page here and i will use oh, okay let me create one html page one page is here that is html file and this page is uh, i can write okay home dot html okay so this page will be in uh, web folder the page name is home.html don't mention the html extension over here otherwise your file name will be home.html.html so uh, i will write only the home here. now finish it so now one page is uh, created uh, with the home.html and i will create one form so I hope you all know that uh, how to create forms because you uh, said earlier that HTML is not required to discuss. So that's why I'm not discussing the HTML. Okay, I will just create the form. So you can write the form here and there are um, so many input types so input type i'm taking a text name is equal i am taking the name okay i can use the placeholder also that will show and prompt to the user what the type of the thing you want to from the user so i'm saying username or let me make more interactive enter your name and this is close now go to the next line that is break the line by using br now again i'm going to create input box one more time input type text okay i will put the name as age placeholder enter age and this one again break the line two times and then input type submit okay and uh, value i will write the value as uh, submit like this now so when i will call this html page okay from uh, my application that is uh, this one so the page name is uh, home.html this i i think uh, the page name is home.html okay it's fine so your home.html is now available when i'll submit when I'll click the submit button, then it will it will submit the records to which servlet to the first servlet. Okay, this is your first servlet. So what will I do? I will send a request to this servlet. So I need to write the action where you want to send the request so i want to send the request on the my servlet this is your action name so let me check uh, that where it is going so if i click on the submit look at here it is going on first uh, look at your url okay so when i am clicking on it it is going on to the my uh, sorry first servlet and there are two parameters name one is name and second one is age and these parameter uh, is coming from the input types name okay so when you create any form 
when you create any form and when you write the name attribute of any input type that name attribute works as a variable as a container that will hold the user's input and on the servlet you can extract the values by using these parameters so these are your parameters so uh, as i have already uh, written over here the parameter name name and age age so that's why i have created the name as name and age so if you make changes into the name as n and name as a so you will get the value by using n and by using a i hope this is also clear now come to this part and i am writing here that is the name is daniel age is uh, 34 and if i submit here then look at here hello welcome daniel the value okay so one thing you can see here by submitting your form you can send the data to the server okay by placing the action here an action must be a valid servlet invocation path okay if you write anything that is not matched with the, your servlet url then it will be through an exception that 404 will be definitely suppose i am writing the first servlet one and as we know that this type of the url is not available in my application so it will show you one error suppose i am writing anything that is so you can see that this is a 404 the my first servlet one is not available now tell me any question till now so now i hope you are now able to send the request to the server to the servlet and after that you can perform and you can write your logics isn't it okay so uh, okay now tell me uh, till now uh, everything is fine that you got everything uh, only the thing you need to do is uh, just do one thing uh, write these code once by yourself then you will get the more clarity about the things uh, ming is still breaking Okay, so I, I hope uh, today our client is creating some problem that we are using because uh, Hinduja, you are getting uh, my voice perfect or you are getting any problem or just in just tell me. yes uh where uh, meng you need to know that do we need to specify the method get or post where uh in the form that we have designed on to the html into the form meng i'm not getting your question if you're talking about a uh, servlet so definitely you need to define the method to get and post accordingly and if you are asking about the html so uh, let me tell you if you do not mention any method into the form okay so by default it is get by default it is get if you want to send the request in the form of post then you need to specify the method here is equal post 
okay so by default it is get but if you want to send the uh, data into the post then you need to specify this one got it so now what is the difference between the get and post one more time and a few more things are here to explain but uh, first i'll explain that what is the difference between get and post okay so we have already seen that when we send a request uh, by using get so this type okay one thing let me delete this okay so uh, you can see here if i enter any name and uh, age and enter here let me change first then uh, i'll explain the things this is by default get fine so name and age so look at here you are getting the correct output and look at the url also okay so just uh, uh, remember this point and just put these url into your cache memory for the few moment okay now i'm going to change the method from get to post so first thing what you need to do is you are sending a request to this servlet and you are sending the request by using post to so what you need to do first is you make your servlet to get the user request that is coming in the form of post and since we are writing the method do get so it is not able to do your request process okay so what we need to do is first we need to change this method into post first thing got it for get do get for post do post now just come to this uh, page and if i writing something and if i enter then you can see here my data get processed but the url you are you are not able to see that which data is going into your request means it will be not visible onto the url can you see this now tell me you are creating you are creating a form for the user login okay so user will input his or her user id and password also so will you write that type of the code that will show the user name and the password into the url no this will breach your security so if you have any data that should not be visible onto the url then send those data by using post method first thing got it first thing that is the requirement of the post that the data that you are sending will not visible onto the url and it will be encoded and you uh, the data will send in the back from the back to the server so that data could not be decrypted first thing that is secure second the get method that you are using to send the data to the server it has a limited capacity that how much the data can be sent by using by using the get method okay so the limitation of the get method is maximum 2 bytes means 2048 characters can be sent by using the get method got it so suppose you have a uh, data that is uh, uh, more than 
2048 characters or 2 MB. Uh, maybe it gets changed so uh, you can uh, get the right uh, number that how much data we can send by using it. But uh, the latest documentation says that I uh, have seen at least 2 byte. Okay. Sorry, 2 KB. 2 MB. 2 MB, sorry. 2 MB. I was saying every time 2 MB. Yes, 2 MB. 2 MB. I am saying that 2 KB. So, no, 2 bytes, not 2 bytes. It's 2 MB actually. Okay. 2 MB. Okay. 2 MB means 2048 KB. So, you can send the maximum size the data that is 2 MB. Now you are sending uh, data that is more than 2 MB. So uh, the get is not able to carry those data first thing. So in that case, we should use the post method. Now, second uh, requirement is when you don't want to render the data into the URL, use post method. Okay, third one. If you are sending a file, file means any document file, any image file, any video, audio file to the server, then you must use the post method. Get method is not able to take uh, the files from the user request. Just note down these three points that when we should go for the post. Got it? So let me show you, uh, this is my HTML page. And suppose there is a field that is password, okay? And the name of the password is password. Enter password, this is your form, okay? So enter your name, enter the password, and the method is post. Now, going to execute this one. And entering something that is the name, username is this password is uh, anything. So yes, this is not visible right now. But when I'll submit this, now look at the URL. Name is Provis Apps, but the password you can see here. So definitely you will not write these kind of the code that is visible to the end user that can see uh, the password. So definitely we will send this request in the form of post okay now i hope this is now clear to everyone that uh, when to use uh, the pa uh, post method and when to use get method is it clear now today's task is to everyone that send two numbers okay and perform and perform the operation, the perform operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Okay, so I'm going to show you the design of the page only. I'm going to show you the design of the page. And as per the user's request, the operation should be performed. So I'm going to design this one. Uh, to do this, I'll use Excel. Okay, I'll show you by using Excel. So the form should be look like this. This is your form. And addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and mod. There are five uh, operations. So, what I will do is I'll merge this. Merge this one and this one also. So, this and this. Okay. So this is your first uh, input box. This is your first input box. And it will be uh, like enter 
the first number okay and here you will write enter second number and after that you will create okay what you will create look at here this one so this box will have add this will have add and every button will have the background color as this one okay add another one is uh, subtract then multiplication then division then mod i hope uh, the design is clear so whenever user input any number here first number and second number it will go to the server get processed and according to the button that whatever the button you will click if you click on the add then it will show the addition it will if it is subtraction then it will show the result in the form of subtraction if multiplication then it should show the multiplication a division then show the division and mod then mod okay got it and for the whole process you will create only one servlet i hope the question is clear now what you need to do is you need to write only one servlet that will process all the thing addition subtraction multiplication division as per the user's request question is clear what you need to do okay fine so uh, just do this one okay and uh So uh, this is uh, the today's assignment and we have seen that how to send the request and how to get the request and uh, how to process these things. Tomorrow we'll see uh, mapping, first thing. What we will learn? Mapping. One important aspect, that is very important. Second one, we'll see that how to communicate with database. It will take time communicate with database and another one is we'll see if we'll get the time annotation now tell me any question any doubt if you have any query then type your query no queries okay yes uh, you can show the result on the same web page uh, Ming, but that page should be dynamic means if you had designed uh, the, uh, it is on um, HTML so you uh, you cannot show the result on the HTML because the HTML is not dynamic okay so for that you need to create the JSP or you will create the servlet then you can do this that you want that I, if I click on the add then it should show the result here okay if i click on the subtract then the result should show here so i will explain this that how to see the result on the same page so tomorrow i will show you that how to get the record on the same page but that must be dynamic okay Meng? yes the the question is fine we can see and we can generate the thing on the same page and we do this we do this in our application okay but gradually, uh, this is my way to train the student that uh, first understand that how to perform uh, the request and response because these small things will become a bigger thing when we will go to uh, the actual implementation. That's why. 
and uh, what i take a personally uh, to all the student that i will explain each and everything from the scratch uh, if you know the things it is fine if you don't know then uh, you will get the knowledge if you know then it will be revised to everyone okay so that's all for today uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow i will see you tomorrow to with some more content and just do this one okay just complete this one if you have if you get any problem you can text me if i'll get the time then i will reply otherwise i'll explain the things in tomorrow's session okay thank you for joining this session bye bye